Hey, local man here. Just wanted to give a few life updates uh, before I get into the video. I wanted to say that I am not done with TikTok yet. I've been trying to do some activism on the app as much as I possibly can, given how much I am being shadow banned, I'm trying to promote black creators that still want to use the app, that kind of stuff. I have not completely stepped away yet, but that is something that I'm still trying to do. It's just, it is very important to use my platform to do some greater good right now. And I have a big platform on TikTok, which is why I haven't left it. So there's that. Um, but also I wanted to, since it's Pride Month, oh my God, happy Pride guys. I wanted to celebrate the amazing black lives that helped get us all of our rights that we have as LGBTQA plus people because Pride would be nothing without the amazing black people that started it all. So I wanted to just celebrate them this month. And also given everything else going on in the world, it's just a good idea to be as informed as we possibly can on as much as we possibly can right now. So yeah, without further ado. This is my intro. So to start, I wanted to give some statistics, some numbers, um, some basic information. Some of them uh, are a little bit dark, so be prepared for that. But that is just the reality of the world we live in. Um, and I think it's important for everyone to be as informed as they possibly can be, and that sometimes includes just knowing the facts. So here they are. There are about 9 million total LGBTQA plus people living in America. 1 million of those are black and LGBTQA plus. Most black LGBTQA plus people living in America are young and female, and one third of them are raising kids. And they live all over, but they're concentrated in Washington, DC, Maryland, Georgia, New York and North Carolina. Obviously, they live all over, but like I said, they're just more concentrated in some of those areas. Because of discrimination, 32% of kids living with Black LGBTQA plus families face poverty, compared to 13% of kids raised by heterosexual Black families, and 7% of kids living with married white heterosexual parents. So, just because of discrimination, just because of discrimination, 32% of kids living with black LGBTQA plus families face poverty. 34% of black trans people experience extreme poverty, which is compared to 9% of non-trans people experiencing extreme poverty. So again, with the discrimination, just because these people are black, just because they are LGBTQA plus, specifically in this case, just because they are black and trans, they, they just they just experience poverty more. It doesn't make any sense. These are why these facts are important to know is because so much of the reason why these people can't get anywhere, pretty much the only reason is because of discrimination. They are forced into these, to these statistics that they, they shouldn't have to be in. But these are all true and it is so messed up. Another horrible statistic and very on point with everything going on right now. Black survivors of hate crimes are 1.3 times more likely to experience police violence than non-black people. They are also twice as likely to experience any physical violence, twice as likely to experience discrimination, and 1.4 times more likely to experience threats during hate violence. I don't know if I really need to explain that one further. That one speaks for itself. Um, Black trans women face the highest levels of fatal violence and are not likely at all to turn to the police for anything because of this. 38% of black trans people that have to deal with police also report harassment, 14% report physical assault, and 6% report sexual assault. Like 30% 30, 30 of anything is a very high number. Like, like, imagine if three out of seven times you had to interact with the police, you got physically assaulted, or you got sexually assaulted, or you got harassed. Like, this is just their lives. So the last statistic I wanted to touch on is about HIV. It is that black people are more likely to catch HIV, even though they're statistically more likely to use protection during sex, which is absolutely ridiculous.
So now that we all have some more idea of the harsh realities of living in America as a black LGBTQA plus person, I actually wanted to celebrate, like I said, black lives too. There are some people here that I have done a little bit of research about that I really, really, really think are important for you to know about. Also, if you've already heard of them, awesome. If you haven't, awesome too. Are you ready? Let's do this. First on my list of people I wanted to talk to you about was Bayard Rustin. He worked on the civil rights movement from the 1940s through the 1960s. He worked with Martin Luther King Jr. on the March on Washington movement in 1941 to end racial discrimination in employment. He also helped organize the Freedom Rides, which were people riding interstate buses into segregated southern United States to protest the non-enforcement of Morgan versus Virginia, which was a ruling that stated that segregated buses are unconstitutional. So, what a man. Openly gay, you did hear that right, in the 1940s through the 1960s, probably before that. But still, like, this man was doing so much. He worked with Martin Luther King. By the way, if you didn't know, the March on Washington movement was the same place that Martin Luther King gave his I Have a Dream speech, which very monumental, very important. Um, so another thing about Bayard Rustin, he um, definitely did believe in the idea that peaceful protest was important. He really appreciated Gandhi. He studied Gandhi, all that kind of stuff. He was part of the people that taught Martin Luther King why peaceful protest was so important. So he's, he's an important person. Um, Another person I wanted to touch on because I thought she was so cool, there was a lesbian performer in the Harlem Renaissance named Gladys Bentley. If you don't already know who she was, she wore a tux, she wore a top hat, she did gender bending. She literally did not give a honestly dude. And I wish I could, I don't think I can leave you any of her music to listen to like in the background right now, but like I will drop some of her music in the below. I will drop some of her music. Um, so that you guys can listen to it because honestly, she's so cool. She's so cool. She gender bended in the Harlem Renaissance. That was forever ago. Like she was so cool. So the last person I wanted to talk about was Marsha P. Johnson. Um, if you haven't heard her name before, you probably haven't heard much about the Stonewall riots, which I will give you a quick rundown of in the next second or two. Basically what the Stonewall riots were was, uh, there was this place called the Stonewall Inn. It was a gay bar. Um, it was prominent in the 1950s and 60s during the time that being gay was actually illegal in America. So it was owned by the mafia and they basically had to deal with police that they wouldn't be raiding the place that often as long as the mafia gave them stuff in return. And in exchange, the mafia sometimes extorted its own patrons and all that kind of stuff, all that good mafia stuff. Basically at the end of the day, they had a deal with the police that they weren't gonna be raiding and they did it still all the time. People were arrested for solicitation of homosexual relations. There were people that were gender banding arrested for not wearing gender appropriate clothing. It was ridiculous. And one early morning on June 28th, 1969, the police decided to raid the Stonewall Inn and everyone had enough. The people inside started pushing and shoving and fighting back and the people outside the inn lit it on fire and the riots lasted for a month and it was a big, big, big deal. It is actually now in, in 2016, I think President Obama named the Stonewall Inn a national monument. So it was a very important thing that happened. That is why we have pride in the month that we have pride. Again, the Stonewall Inn was very important writing. Okay, so Marsha P. Johnson. People like to say that she was the first person that lit it on fire. However, people, everyone that was there says it was no one person that started the fire. They all just kind of decided to work together. Um, but Marsha P. Johnson was a person, she was a patron of the Stonewall Inn. She also helped form this thing called Street Transgender Action Revolutionaries, which is abbreviated STAR, and she formed it with her fellow trans activist, Sylvia Rivera, and it is a radical political organization basically there to help homeless LGBTQA plus youth and also help sex workers. She also is known for being an AIDS activist, so definitely a very important person. We love Marsha P. Johnson. All right, now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, God, I just want to be able to support black businesses. I just don't know where to start. Boy, do I have a surprise for you. I have places to start. So these are all obviously tailored to what I would like, but that doesn't mean that there's not something in here for you. And if I don't list anything that you 
you want specifically, I found this app called Black Nation. If you download it, you can find literally any black owned business in your area for literally anything. So you have no excuse to not be shopping with black owned businesses right now. You have no excuse. If you don't like these, there are more in your area. Download Black Nation, it will show you. So first to start, if you like skincare, but you want it to be clean, there's this this place called Clur, 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 Clur.co is their website. And they do clean botanical skincare. It has values of inclusivity. It's got values of being ethical. It is clean, like I said. I just, it, please go check it out. Clur.co. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but it doesn't matter. Link is going to be down there. Did YouTube change everything? I don't know, I just use my phone. Another place that you definitely need to check out is Rayo, Rayo and Honey. If you like those little like inspirational like banners and all that kind of stuff and like if you like pop culture banners and like just like little, you know, like whenever you see like inspirational quotes and all that kind of stuff like hung up on the wall, they make a whole bunch of those. They are so cute. They are anywhere from pop culture to literature to affirming phrases. They also use a clean design aesthetic. It is very cute. You need to go check it out. If you need to give someone a gift or you just want something positive for your own room, it is a great place to go. Again, it is rayoandhoney.com. Rayo, I don't know. Another business that I actually didn't know was black owned was the Honey Pot Co. Are you serious? I see this, I see it all the time when I'm in the store and it's all feminine products. It's all 100% clean. It is all 100% good for you. I've heard some things by doctors saying that even if it says it's advertised for women and it is clean, that you should still definitely check with a doctor before using it. So I would recommend you do that before using these products, but it is 100% clean. It is for women. It is by women, feminine products. Please check it out. Thehoneypot.co is the website. So there's another website, if you like skincare, called Gold. G-O-L-D-E, not just gold gold.co is their website and it is at home self-care products from face masks to smoothie boosters they even just added latte blends like self-care all the way around oh my god i found this one oh my god i complete okay so as you can tell this is one of my favorite ones i've found there's this coffee and tea place called black and bold the website is blk and bold.com black and bold um that's how they spell black and it they have six different coffees and they have six different teas. And I cannot believe I did, like buy your coffee from there. You have no excuse. Everyone drinks like coffee or tea or something, pretty much everyone. I'm so excited to start buying from there. It is all fresh roasted, all fair trade, and the teas are loose leaf. Another place I'm really excited about finding is Pure Home. The website is pure-home. It is natural, non-toxic, eco-friendly laundry detergent and household cleaning products, which and get this, their laundry detergent container is compostable and recyclable. And then the last one I wanted to talk to you guys about is Beauty Bakery. It is a makeup brand. You probably know all about it, but Beauty Bakery is such a great brand. If you don't already support them, you should. You can find basically any shade and also much like that, you should check out Fenty Beauty. But there are just so many amazing black owned makeup lines and beauty bakery is just a great place to start if you haven't already. So I know we trailed off there a little bit at the end when it came to the businesses. I know they weren't LGBTQA plus and I know that the point of this video is that but mostly given everything going on right now I just felt like it was important to give you some black owned businesses to shop from to be just completely honest with you. So I know it's not pride related but still please give them your support and like i said there's an app called black nation if you need to find local ones in your area um and again happy pride so thank you for joining me on this journey i love you guys ow here's another picture of my dog follow me on all my social medias they are all the same i made it easy for you